first of our Easter Sunday quarterfinals, brought together two of the really big beasts of the EHL as a Royal Polo Club of Barcelona took on Rotweiss Cologne. And it was uh, Cologne in the red and white shirts, remember the club of the two Zeller brothers and also the two Vesses. And of course, for Polo, we had uh, Pau Kamada, and Kamada thought he'd won a penalty stroke for his team there. Bart De Liefte, the uh, Dutch umpire, found uh, plenty of disagreement coming from the uh, Cologne team, and they decided they would go for a video referral. And afterwards there was some contact, but he played the ball clean, so no stroke. OK, no stroke, no foul. OK, no thank foul, you. The Hayes Hoffman, the uh, video umpire, decided it wasn't to be a penalty stroke after all. Disappointment then for Palo. Matthias Vitas was in the thick of things throughout, and uh, that attack ended in a penalty corner. Good work there by Gabriel Debanche. No complaint this time from Rotweiss. Kamada came up and bought out the very best of Max Weinhold, who made a fine save there, diving away to his right hand side. That was an easy penalty corner for uh, umpire Andy Mayer to give. Some interested spectators. And how about this for a strike from. Who else? Christopher Zeller. Really fine flick there, high into the net, well beyond the reach. So into the uh, second quarter, and uh, Polo starting to come back into contention. Rotby still leading by one goal, but what's happened here? A double deflection, first off the stick of Philip Zeller, then off Max Meinhold, and the ball has ended up in the back of the net. And that's an own goal. Christoph Beckman was not impressed. Real passion there coming from the Cologne coach. And an uh, interested uh, spectator there, Richard Krychek, up in the crowd. Rock Weiss continuing to attack strongly in a careless. Bit of defending there by uh, Fabregas. Up stepped Zeller, and he put the ball beyond the reach of Fabregas. This time low, and Cologne back ahead. No chance there for Oriol Fabregas. Too much heat on the ball. Well, at 2-1, the game was still very much in the balance, but Cologne came powerfully forward looking for a third goal that would surely end the polo resistance and a clever bit of tricky there winning another corner opportunity all eyes once again on Christopher Zeller this time the woodwork came to the rescue of polo and on the rebound Timo Vest couldn't control his shot polo were giving as good as they got though and uh, that seemed to have come off a defender's foot. They wanted a replay, but they couldn't find a captain to ask for one. Yeah, I need to clear it up. Andy Mayer waved away the appeals. So into the final quarter we went. Polo still training, but how about that for a response early in the fourth quarter? Gabriel de Bange there, the son of the coach, with a wonderful tipping goal to bring the scores back level again. Nerves jangling for both sides as we uh, went on towards the end of this game. Kamada, as ever, a thorn in the flesh of the Cologne side and winning there another penalty corner opportunity. Kamada with a trademark headband. Great save by the man on the line there, Tobias Hauke, somehow keeping it out and saving the blushes of Max Weinholt, who was beaten there. Kamado not to be denied, sneaking in there in front of the attacker and a deflection putting Polo ahead with two and a half minutes left on the clock. Polo ahead for the very first time. Again, a quality finish. And it was Polo who was celebrating at the end and Backman had to take his team away 
to lick their wounds. Polo in the semi-finals.